What's up, fam? Welcome back to the Well That's Good podcast. Happy Wednesday, everybody. I hope you're having a great week. I am so excited for this episode because these are two people I personally follow on social media and they give me good laughs all the time, not to mention incredibly inspiring. But we have Danny and Leia Set Goki on the podcast today. They are a host of the popular podcast. I love this name. I got, I got to make sure I get it right. Live in La Vida Goki. So I I am pumped to have y'all on the Well That's Good podcast. Welcome to the show. Hello, Thank you for Sadie. having us. How fun. I, Thanks yeah. for having us. We're pumped. I mean, seriously, y'all's Instagram is hilarious. Um, I have uh, laughed at several of your pranks that you have done to your amazing <laughs> husband. So uh, excited to have y'all on, get to know y'all a little bit more. But I got to start the podcast the same way I start every podcast, and that's asking our guests a question. What is the best piece of advice that you have ever been given? Boom. Drop it like a tot. You go first or me? You. All right. So a lot of good advice that I've been given, but one that sticks out is when I was coming off American Idol, which was a long time ago, uh, Simon Cowell came up to me. A lot of people were telling me which way I should go. A Hmm. lot of of record labels, all these different things. But Simon Cowell gave me the best advice. He said this. He said, don't worry about what genre or what place you go. He said, you need to make good music. Hmm. He said, good music sells. And he said, good music will always rise to the top. Wow. And so from that, from that piece of advice, I was like, yeah, like it. So when are you going to start doing it? <laughs> <laughs> Working on it. Working on it. <laughs> I was going to, I didn't know which way to tease him. If I was going to go Simon Cowell. Okay. That was good. So I've been trying to make good He music. always sets the ball up for me to just. Yeah. Awesome. yeah can we just vent for a minute? I, I wrote my wife a song don't called you Better Than Gold. Bring that up. And let me tell you, the first, when I showed her the song, she goes, I don't like it. Why didn't you write me a better one? <laughs> no. And Sadie's so, not our therapist, Danny. Well, Sadie, do you have any advice? Welcome to marriage um, counseling, everyone. <laughs> hey, look, you know what I appreciate, though? You got to love an honest woman. You got to love so That's when you know <laughs> you can trust someone when they're like, nope, not it. <laughs> that, that's what my therapist told me. So I've been trying to implement that. So I am a counselor. No, here's the thing, though. It's actually funny because my <laughs> husband is like opposite where he will not tell me. And I'm like, babe, like you have to tell me. And then it's always like, oh, no, it's so good. And then I'll ask my mom and my mom will be like, yeah, you could work on that a little bit more. So you got to know, moms. you got to know the people <laughs> that will be honest with you. But that is hilarious. Here yes. you go. Yeah, Danny. Um, okay. So my best advice was. Dang it. I'm going to say it bad. My English is not great. (laughs) My best advice was the more things you say yes to, the more life you live. Mm, That's right. That's that's right. She said in the car, she was, uh, I was was trying to say it. She said it so wrong. She's like, the more yeses you yes to, the better life is. And I said, what does that even mean? Do you mean the more things you say yes to? So (laughs) basically, ever since I heard that, I started implementing it. Like when people would be like, you know, do you want to do this? You want to do that? And most of the time I would have been like, I don't know. I just try to say yes. It's good. And then I like don't want to do it. And then I do it. You know, and then I don't regret it. You say a lot good. of no's to me though. Can we, <laughs> can we talk about that? There's a lot of I would have never known that was your best hey, advice. <laughs> no's are just as important as the yeses, right? But the yeses. My therapist that, said that too. <laughs> gosh, I am just a counselor are today. You I'm a therapist. I think I might. <laughs> no. There you go. Oh my do gosh. Pay you? Y'all are awesome. That's such good advice. And uh, also, y'all, y'all hear something funny about Simon Cowell. So we we love American Idol. I mean, seriously, still watching it, still going for sure. And I love the judges now. But Simon and Paula and Randy are definitely like the OG. Well, one day we started talking about this. And my older sister, Rebecca, she's um, she's from Taiwan, but she's my sister. Um, she started living with the- living with us when she was 16 and then she's just been a part of our family ever since she's like 30 something now has two kids married lives right beside us like whole thing so we're talking one day and she says that simon cowell is her celebrity crush and we're like what (laughs) in the world (laughs) and he looks nothing like her husband the no vibe like her husband i mean it is like the most random thing ever so we rag her about that all the time but i'll be happy to report to her that someone's best piece of advice came from simon cow um but that really is such good advice i i love that because i do think that so many people get so worried that they're gonna mess up 
their life by making a choice of like the wrong college or the wrong genre or the wrong thing. But really, like wherever you're at, if you do your best and if you are obedient to God in where you're at with what you have, um, it's going to go okay. You know, (laughs) it's going to be okay. And so I think that advice can apply to a lot of things. I think it does. And I think it's easier for God to steer a person moving than it is for a person just parked in indecision. It's good. And so one of the things that I think that God can do is, you know, Proverbs 3, 5 says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your paths. Mm -hmm. If you're acknowledging it, that's a life verse for me. If you acknowledge him, and you're moving in the wrong direction, Direction, he will direct you into the right direction. So Great. I think one of the best things we can do is just not be like a parked car because a parked car never goes anywhere. Come but on. when you are moving, even in the wrong direction, if you're acknowledging God and you're, and you're open, you know, I was thinking this morning, like a lot of times we don't want to be open to what God has to say. So we stay in our stubbornness, but we must be open and allow him to transform our hearts. That's good. I love that a parked car is not going anywhere. I love little sayings like that. They um, Yesterday, I was talking to a friend, and within like two minutes, two little sayings like that came out from both of my grandparents. They're like, you're full of all your grandparents' sayings. I'm like, well, they're so good. Like These are the things that really do help you. And so I love that. Uh, I do want to ask y'all, I mentioned how funny y'all are, and that's already so evident. I mean, y'all ragging each other, and it's just funny. But has that always been a part of y'all's relationship? Is that something y'all are intentional about bringing to your family? Or even when y'all were dating, were y'all just goofy around each other? Well, my wife tells a story like this, and I think her interpretation is wrong, but yes, it is a memorable moment when I remember when I finally just realized, oh, she's a funny girl. I, I, she would always have jokes, but how, then I- How far in were you? Well, honey, I mean, we got met and married in seven months. So it was a really- <laughs> This was like a year in. I was like- A year? No, this is <laughs> like what we were dating. In. No, it wasn't. We were, we, were, oh, we were married. I was like, you, <laughs> we were married. you, you made just it all now? the way into marriage this deep. And I know. <laughs> I like, See, I knew the interpretation would change. I remember us being dating and I said, oh, you're fun. She goes, you didn't realize that yet? <laughs> yeah, I just didn't know. I know you would do funny things, but I didn't realize it was like the- fabric of your personality. Have you met my mother? I did meet your mother. My mom's like this too. This It's a Cuban side. Always joking. Cubans are jokesters and we're always joking and making light of hard situations because, you know, where we come from, everything's so hard. So in Cuba. Yeah. So we just make light of everything. So a lot of my joke, but I will say I joke around a lot, but I... I don't know if people realize this, but if Danny doesn't laugh, the, like that is that's it's not funny to me if he's not laughing. If as long as I get a laugh out of him, I'm like, yeah, I really that's it. awesome. I love <laughs> so it. So he's my audience. He's your audience. I love it so much. Well, I remember for me, so you know, I'm a pretty goofy person as well. I mean, I tend to do more serious things because I'm like preaching and you know speaking and stuff like that, and uh, writing books that are more serious. But in real, like, if you're hanging around me, I'm pretty goofy and all the things. And so me and my best friend, when we lived in Nashville, we had like our Instagram account that was just us being weird and funny. And it was just called It's Sadie and Laney. And we just posted like the dumbest stuff. And honestly, we really just did it for our family because we were like, oh, you know, we're just going to post all our dumb stuff. But we didn't make it private. Well, it like took off. Like we had so many followers (laughs) on this thing. And people just thought it was so funny because they saw themselves in it. Well, this is like my husband before he was my husband, before we even met. He was just my sister's friend. He was like watching It's Sadie and Lainey with my sister one day. And he was like, I mean, I just don't think it's funny. And he like said that to my sister. (laughs) And she told me that when we started dating. I could not get past it. I was like, how do you not think that's funny? Like, what is wrong with you? And so for so long, I was like, do you not think I'm a funny person? You know, it's like this whole thing, because you're right. It's like, if he laughs, then that's the only person that matters. If he didn't laugh, it's like, dang, it didn't hit. So I totally get that. Well, I think for us, I think for us guys, sometimes we, we want to make sure we do laugh so we don't hurt our wife's feelings. <laughs> and so, but I don't do that for you, honey. I'm thinking of other guys who do that. Other guys out there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so everyone loves a good how did you meet story. And uh, I, I've read y'all's, but I want to hear y'all say it. How, <laughs> she's like, don't ask. How did y'all meet? <laughs> 
Yo, we all know that running a business takes a team. Most things in life take a team. If you wanna be good at something, then you don't need to do it alone. You need to bring people in who can do the, the good stuff with you. And uh, some of those things are you know, not as seen as others. And I gotta give some credit where it's due today. I wanna give some credit to stamps.com. They've been so important to over 1 million businesses for 25 years, and that includes Live Original. Stamps.com makes it so easy for you to save money by giving you up to 84% off USPS and UPS rates, and they will automatically tell you the cheapest and fastest shipping options available. Stamps.com has got you covered, friends. Stamps.com will save you money, and they will save you time, too, and that's something that we cannot get back. No more standing in line at the post office. All you need is a computer and a printer to get started. They'll even send you a free scale so that you got everything that you need right there in your home or office. No matter if you're working late or coming in early, get all your shipping needs taken care of with no traffic, no lines, no waiting, day or night. It's pretty convincing, right? Like I mentioned, Ello has used stamps.com for our shipping needs. Like I mentioned too, uh, people on our team are doing stuff that goes a little bit behind the scenes. You know, they're packing boxes and shipping things, but using stamps.com has made it so easy for our team. Uh, my team does so much online and a lot of you out there probably do too. And stamps.com smoothly connects with every major marketplace and shopping cart like Etsy and eBay. Plus my team loves the package pickup option they can schedule it through the stamps.com dashboard quickly and easily right from the office. So set your business up for success and get started with stamps.com today. Sign up with the promo code WO, that's W-H-O-A, for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital skill. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter the code WO. Oh man, because she always makes me tell it's through Chuck Norris. I was Norris. about to be like, through Chuck so this story gets a little weird before it gets gooder. So I say, <laughs> oh, not honey. even a good word, but just <laughs> get to so it. So I was, <laughs> I'm I was dad joke you the whole way through, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm terrible with dad jokes. Terrible. I mess them up. Uh, Chuck Norris really is the one who puts oh, together. Honey. No, really, it truly is, and so. Um, I was hired back in the day to do a fundraiser for Chuck Norris, me and my band. We were the music of the night. This is back in 2011. And he's also going to make a long story longer. So I um, love it. Just- I I, I'm all about long stories. It's great. <laughs> so I remember, you know, when I met Chuck Norris, cause we're doing rehearsal and we got to meet him at the event and I said, Hey, what, uh, what's your favorite Chuck Norris joke? I put my favorite. So he, I put his favorite Chuck Norris joke, which I can't remember what it was. And I tweeted it. And then when I got back after sound check, I'm in my hotel room. I start going through just who replied. And I saw a beautiful girl retweet (laughs) me. But And and I was like, oh, I'm really special. This girl must think I'm hot stuff. And so I click on her feed. And she's I'm amongst many Chuck Norris jokes. I'm just in there. (laughs) Uh, Apparently, you were just hashtagging Chuck Norris jokes that day. And I was just one person that showed up on the feed. And. And so I was like, dang it, there's nothing special about me. Cause I thought, you know, if, if this person commented and just, you know, her and just put me up there, it's great. But she was interacting with a bunch of people. And so anyways, I just, just going to go through all your emotions. Or- I am. Like, Cause I'm really so processing. <laughs> <You're still> processing. <laughs> I am. Cause I wanted to be special and I guess I'm not. Um, <laughs> I ended up reaching out to her in Spanish. I spoke to her in Spanish. I'm a white boy. He so he wrote Spanish. to me in Spanish and that what caught my attention. I was like, oh, this white guy speaks Spanish. I was like, oh. <laughs> then he picked up. Argument. Caucasian. This did is you actually honey, speak? Not white guy, Caucasian. Wait, did you actually speak Spanish or did you Google translate? No, I speak, I speak Spanish. Okay. I, that's I've impressive. Along the way that's because, impressive. Yeah. Well, I've been around the Hispanic community a long time and I just never wanted to be talked about. And so I was like, Ain't no one talking about me. And so I started learning Spanish. <laughs> That's awesome. And it's come really in handy. That is awesome. So we tweet, we 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 talked a little bit on Twitter, and then I ended up calling her, and the rest is history. Wow. Seven months later. Seven months later, we were married. I love it. And I'm still praying about it. <laughs> I'm still I processing. I've still been praying. Lord, is she the one? <laughs> Well, it what was happened? funny because when I, I read your story and it was like, you know, you met on Twitter and then you started Skyping and all this stuff. And I was like, you know, Christian and I are kind of the same. It's just more of like the newer stuff. Like it was Instagram and we started FaceTiming, you know. So look, you know what? There's no shame in that. And meeting on social media, so many, so many people meet on social media, which Christian and I actually met yeah. 
in person, but didn't really talk that much. And then I went to follow him on social media from us meeting and realized he had DM me like two years before, which I was like, oh, wow, how did I miss this? And then we started talking. (laughs) And yes, and we were at from that moment, we were married. um, We were engaged, I guess, one year later. So similar, similar timelines. So that's awesome. So one fun fact about y'all is you were on American Idol. And then you were also on a reality show, so I hear. So y'all both come from like reality TV moments, like big moments for y'all. Is that something that y'all bonded over whenever y'all met? Did you know she had been on reality? Did you know he had been on American Idol? Like what was the timeline of all that? She would just listen. Well, I was a husband first. Yes. Okay. I, was- <laughs> I was just going to say that she always made it clear that she was more popular than I was first. First. <laughs> no, yeah, I was on a show called Model Latina. Model Latina, which was a show ironic that, because that's... I didn't, I hated models. Was it and I hated... Jennifer Lopez? Was it her? No, I think I forgot the lady's name. See, this is why I can't do these sort of things like modeling stuff. <laughs> My, I couldn't even get the name of the show right. <laughs> the show, it was. I auditioned on accident. It was a whole thing. Anyways, sure, on accident. I did Just stumbled in the room. Oops, no, I did. Well, hey, you are this beautiful, <laughs> so you can definitely do the whole model. I mean, I know you were a legit model, and this is that's really cool in and of itself. Thank you. But yes, I did that for a while, and then no, we never bonded. I don't think we've ever talked about we. This is weird in our house. We don't talk about music. We don't talk about anything. We talk about SpongeBob, Peppa Pig, <laughs> Blazing really? the Monster Machines. Of That's course. the music. People always ask me like, "What's your favorite song?" And I'm like, "I think it's uh, uh, what's those, the best day ever by SpongeBob." Right mine's now. the vegetable one. <laughs> oh, veg- vegetable ones called Veggie Tales. How dare you insult those Christian? <laughs> TV show. The Veggie Tales. I mean, that's what we're into right now. So we Veggie Tales is awesome. I love no, it. Oh, it is awesome. We watch a lot of this. it too. Oh, sorry. Yes. I was just saying we was definitely saying we- are on that train as well. Oh, good. Well, kid homes are full of it. So, but I was talking to Denny's dad about this, and he was asking me, "You guys don't talk about stuff like that?" And we're like, "Oh, like my music and my show." Yeah, we don't talk about. Uh, it's very clear at home. I am no longer Danny Goki. I'm Daddy Goki. <laughs> that's awesome. And I get to jump right into the work. That's awesome. I think that's really sweet. I mean, I think that, you know, it, as much as you can bring your kids into work, that's great. But as much as you can just be home and be a family, like it's beautiful. And it's so true. Oh my gosh, our music right now has been hilarious. Me and Christian were, uh, you know, we had on the Disney hits one day in the car because Honey like loves all the uh, Moana songs and Frozen and um, all just all of it. And Kanto. And one day the the family Madrigal song came on from Encanto. And I don't know if y'all know that one, but like that's that's a like that's like a detailed song, and we both knew every word. And we just were like, "How have we gotten to oh, this point cool. that we know the entire family Madrigal, every person in it?" And so we're you know, but it, I love it. I mean, it's such a fun stage of life, and it's so sweet. And these and are Kato's like. A- we love Encanto. Oh, it's so good. House. It's so good. All these like movies, they're actually really good stories. I mean, I keep finding myself preaching about them in my sermons because I'm like learning. I'm like, oh, wow, this is like actually like really spiritual. <laughs> like, I don't think they meant for that, but it's really good. So I love that. Um, I want to hear about, so before y'all met, um, just a little bit about y'all's backstories. How'd y'all both come to know Jesus and actually start a relationship with faith? Uh, grandfather, my grandfather was a pastor. And so I came to know the Lord at a young age. Um, and, you know, the Bible says no one come to the father unless, you know, the spirit draws him near. And just at a young age, I just really had a, a, a sense to drawing. So I, I, I followed, I didn't ignore it. And so I, 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 I followed the Lord pretty much. I never had a really re- big rebellious phase or any rebellious phase. I've always just, by the grace of God, have followed the Lord. There's been ups and downs. I didn't. I was quite the opposite. I was not raised in church or anything like that. And I, I got invited to church service at 23, but I was on the way to the club. I didn't know it was a church service. No My best way. friend invited me out to see where, cause I was like, he'd been missing for like two months. And then he was like, come meet me and I'll show you where I've been. And I said, okay, I'll meet you. It's my best friend. 
So I went, I was on my way to the club and I was like, sure, I'll stop there before I go to the club. And so I stopped there. I saw where he was and they, you know, they did the the service. They did a salvation call and I totally went up and received the Lord. Well, because they said, yeah, even the, if you're going to a club tonight, you can give your life to Jesus. Yeah. So they said, even if you're going to the club and I was like, well, I'm going to the club. So I'll go give my life to Jesus. I was so excited. Wow. And I went up, I gave my life to Christ. And then my friends, like my friend who... No clue. I was, I guess he knew more about church than I did. I didn't know the rules. I didn't know you weren't supposed to go to the club. He was like, why did you do that? Are, you're still going to the club? And I'm like, yeah, I'll go to the club. He just said, if you're going to the club. So I went to the club. But after that, I started going back because I really loved it. And then I got discipled and um, slowly God started taking things out of me. So slowly I stopped going to the club. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so, um, so that's how I met the Lord. And then I met him two years later. Wow. That's so cool. We were literally talking about that today um, as a team because someone had texted me about something that they heard in my podcast that really meant a lot to them. And it was really cool because the whole podcast was on a certain topic. And then I randomly randomly said this one thing I, and I just and I knew in that moment like that was the Holy Spirit like I knew that was for somebody but it was kind of like a random thing well then I had one of my friends of all people um you know text me and say it's crazy I was listening to this podcast I was kind of in my head about some stuff and it was like whoa wake up call when you said this one line because it was exactly what I need to hear and I thought you know that's just so cool how many times God does that where it's like the one thing that the person doesn't even know they're saying but God like somehow like he said to Moses like I will put the words in your mouth like puts the words in the person's mouth so that that person will hear it and so the fact that this pastor is like even if you're going to the club tonight that probably felt so random for him but you're like that's me like I'm going to the club tonight and God like it's just a moment of God saying like I see you like it's like a moment where God really speaks to you through his people and so I just love that like those random promptings that God just uses in really cool ways um, I was reading about how y'all, I guess, Danny, you wrote a song called Tell Somebody. And the meaning behind that was really powerful having to do with your story. So can y'all talk a little bit about that? Y'all, when life gets busy, it can definitely be hard to stay healthy. Um, Christian and I, we've been traveling a lot, doing a lot of things. We have another baby about to be here. Honey's about to be too. I mean, it's just crazy. And so all that, you're like, how am I going to eat healthy? But it is a priority in our family to eat healthy or live healthy lifestyles. But sometimes it's just, it's just hard. But that's why AG1 by Athletic Greens is amazing for our family. Fitness is super important to Christian, and he loves how easy AG1 fits into his schedule. He can just put one scoop and a cup of water every morning that's it and he's getting all the nutrients he needs for the day that's one scoop of 75 vitamins and minerals that help give him an energy and focus boost for whatever he's got that day he also loves that it supports his immune system and gut health and ag1 makes it super easy for christian to achieve all of his health and fitness goals which are a lot by the way and he is crushing it so ag1 is awesome for um, our family it's also designed with ease in mind so it can just be a super simple switch in your lifestyle and it makes the biggest difference. What's not to love about something easy that makes you feel better? When we travel, um, AG1 is also super easy because they have travel packs. You can just throw them in your backpack and take them on the way. That's what we do. AG1 has been a game changer for the Huff fam. We've also got several of our friends on it too. Um, but if you try it and it's not for you, they actually offer a 90 day money back guarantee. So you really don't have anything to lose. Another thing I personally love is the vitamin D3 plus K2 drops by Athletic Greens. Vitamin D always makes me feel so much better, but who likes taking a handful of pills every day? Not me. So I love that these are just drops that are super easy. You can put a couple drops on your food or in a drink and you're getting uh, giving your body what it needs. It's vitamin D is great for your bones, for your heart, for your teeth. And every bottle of this vitamin D has 600 servings. So you will not be needing any more for a while. Being healthy really is a simple friends. Take control of your health today and give AG1 a try. And if you do, you'll get a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Just go to athleticgreens.com slash woe. That's athleticgreens.com slash woe to check it out today. Yeah, so when we did a event for I Am Second 
some years ago, back in 2018, I think it was, or 2017. And I remember, you know, just hearing her testimony for the really fully for the first time. Uh, you know, many people are impacted by it. You tell me, obviously, but there was a guy named Ed Cash there who's a big writer and he was there and he was so inspired by that message too. He hit me up that next morning and he just started saying how her testimony really, uh, in, you know, just meant so much to him. And we got together, we wrote a song about it. So it's based on her uh, testimony, but it's, it's tell somebody, it's, it's just reminding ourselves, you know, what are the, what are the, one of the, the opening verses, dear church, did you see me? I was a sinner that you walked by on the street. Dear church, remember me. You have something so beautiful, something that I need. You know, we have to remember that other people, what we have, other people want it. I always say this, everybody in this world wants a friend like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Many just don't know it. Yeah. You know, because what, who Jesus really is, when people don't want Jesus, it's usually because they, and you look in the scriptures, it's be, they miss Jesus, like the rich young ruler, because they misunderstand Jesus. Hmm. The rich young ruler thought that Jesus wanted to take everything away. Little did he know that that God was going to give him the entire kingdom. Wow. And so I believe everybody wants Jesus, but if they misunderstand him, they will miss him. Yeah. Wow. That's good. And also, I want to say that when I um, when I got saved, I didn't think that my story was like... Um, a big deal. Cause my story didn't have like, you know, prostitution and drugs or something like crazy, you know? So I would always, I remember even before I was going, Oh, my story's not exciting. It's not great. Like this is my story. Um, and I would just kind of share it flippantly. Maybe that's why he didn't, you know, you may not have heard it. In yeah. Full. You didn't share it much. Right. Cause I didn't think it was like good enough or it was like powerful enough, but like, but even in me sharing that, so like a week ago, like last week, earlier this week, um, I Am Second was in town and they asked me to share my story again. They started a campaign called Tell Somebody where they go and they train people. When they heard my story, they realized that one of the reasons people aren't sharing the gospel as freely is because they're, they don't know how to. Yeah. Yeah. So I Am Second started a training where they teach people on how to tell your testimony or how to, how to win souls and how to bring people to Christ and how to do it efficiently. And so they asked me to, to share my story again, like earlier this week. And I just thought, oh my gosh, like, and I was over here thinking like my, my story wasn't, didn't count. It wasn't special. Like, wow. It didn't have anything, but like, I guess it just finally all like clicked. And I was like, man, God, you can do so much with, you know, our, us just sharing our stories. Yes. Gosh, it's so true. I love that. I mean, I love that verse where it talks about how like the enemy is going to be defeated by the blood of the lamb and the power of our testimony. And I feel like, of course, there's like a tactic from the enemy to make you think your testimony isn't important. Like, why would you share? It's not as important or it's not special or it's not so-and-so story. But it's like, yeah, well, why would we feel that fear to say it? Because if we do say it, it does change lives. It does defeat the enemy. It does spark hope in other people's life, um, no matter what it is. And everybody, I feel like, can relate to something in someone's story. You know, I mean, whether it's you don't relate to the exact scenario, but you relate to the just human, you know, the human feelings or emotions that we go through in life. And we need each other's stories for that. And so I love that so much um, that you did tell your story and what it's done for so many people and now helping them tell their story. Um, Danny, I wrote down a quote that I think you posted on Instagram recently, but it says, truth does not transform until it is truth received. I thought that was really good because I talk about that sometimes, how you know you can know something, um, like you've heard it, a million times about the Bible, but until you really realize the power behind it, it's really not going to change you. Like John three sixteen, you might know what that says, but if that doesn't make you go, oh my God, you're so good. I feel so loved by you. You know, that then maybe you've missed it. And so when you wrote that, what was kind of going on in your heart at that time, or just even your thought process to talk about why it's so important that truth actually is received and not just something that you hear. Yeah. Truth has transforming power and so do lies. So I was in a situation some years ago where I remember coming home just discouraged and defeated. And I was like, Lord, why do I keep repeating certain things in my life when I think I'm overcoming, you know, the anxiety or I think I'm overcoming, you know, the emotional imbalance at times. And that's what I was at the time. I just felt like just my emotions were all over the place. Why? And I heard the Lord speak in my spirit as I was sick because I was, I was, 
I was had tears. I remember my wife was in bed next to me and I'm just like, I was pouring my heart out. I remember him <laughs> sharing this and I was like, <laughs> yeah, she was stop sleeping, but it was, it meant so much to me, but I heard the Lord speak this to me. Truth does not transform until it's truth received. Hmm. And I, I was like, what does that mean? So a lot of times you can get more understanding by thinking, what's the opposite? If the Lord's speaking this, what's the opposite of this? And it's lies don't transform until they're lies received. Hmm. Um, truth has transforming power. So does lies, but truth that transform is truth that has to be received. And so, but what is truth? Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth. So Jesus is truth. That means Jesus is a person. It's relational. What did Jesus say? He said, I'll send you the spirit of truth. So this is a relational aspect. This is not just saying, this is actually a person. It's, good. it's the person of Jesus Christ. He's truth. So when the Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. It actually means, and so we can know. I've, how many times have you heard people say, yeah, I know I shouldn't eat this, yeah. but they do it anyways. Yeah. I know I shouldn't go to the club. I know I shouldn't do X, Y, Z. You name it. They know it's a bad behavior, but they do it anyways. I've met a lot of people who've done it. Why are you looking at me like that? Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> <laughs> anyways, it's because they don't have an intimate encounter. It, the, the, it means that you'll know is an intimacy. So it's knowing the mm -hmm. truth. And so this is where people need to have an intimate encounter, a relationship with truth because it transforms you. But so do lies. Mm -hmm. You look at people who are on, who are on drugs and became addicts and how their life has changed. If you saw the younger version of themselves and then you see them now, they look different because yeah. those lies. Uh, oh, yeah. And we got to remember this. The enemy comes when he comes with lies. He comes with feelings too. Mm -hmm. We live in a culture right now that is, he come that's so, so moved by their feelings. But remember this, the enemy comes with temptation through thoughts, through lies and through feelings. Hmm. So we have to call this out. You may feel a certain way, but that feeling could be absolutely wrong. Remember, think, feel, do. This is how the process, everything starts with a thought. This is why the scriptures say we must renew our minds because how you feel is a direct result to how you think. Now let's think about like this. It's not just how you think consciously, you know, there's a, a system called automation, autonomization, where if you think on something so long, it actually goes down to your subconscious. Wow. It takes minimally 21 days, but at the most three, three uh, cycles of 21 days for something to go to your subconscious. And now you're feeling things, not even thinking about it, but it's in your subconscious. And so wow. it's so important that we get truth because we transform by the truth. And many people say, well, I, you know, I'm thinking the truth. I'm feeling, I'm reading the word, but I just don't feel it. Keep doing it. Hmm. Keep doing it because this is where the parable of the sower comes resist in. The devil never sees. Yeah, you resist the devil, but the parable. Yeah. So look at what happens. The seed goes through processes, hmm. and these processes, some fell on the wayside, some. But the ones that took root, the ones that were good soil, the ones that kept tilling that soil of the mind and of the heart, that's where the seed came in and began to produce fruit. And so, the word of God never returns void. Truth will always transform. But will you stick to the truth? When the hard times come, when the feelings come, when the thoughts come, we must stick to it. It's great. That's right. Come on. <laughs> we went to church. That was so good. I mean, truly, I think that that is such a word that people need to hear, especially right now in our culture where truth is, you know, so relevant and your truth and my truth and Amen. all the truth. It's like, no, there yep. is. A truth, the truth. Jesus said, One I truth. am Jesus. the way, the yep. truth, the life. So that's such a good message. Again, everybody needs to hear. And even the way that you broke it down is so good because so many people, it's like all of a sudden they're like, they feel um, almost like a slave to their thought. You know, it's like, oh, like, well, I can't help that I think that or I can't help that I feel that or whatever. And yes, there are times where a thought will just randomly pass through your mind and you're like, whoa, that was intrusive. That was not something that I intended to think. But you can yeah. be a part of renewing That's your right. mind. You can take control of your thoughts. You can take these thoughts captive. And um, some that that's going to actually require some work, though, you know? It's actually going to require maybe um, deleting the app that's leading you down those paths of thought or getting out of the relationship that's leading you down that path. So I think that sometimes like we just don't take the necessary steps 
that's needed to renew your mind, you know? And so yeah. um, mm-hmm. I love that, man. I've had to do that so many times in my life where it's like, okay, what is making me think this? What's leading this thought? Um, I mean, I think about how so many people suffer from such bad anxiety and yet they listen to crime podcasts all day. I'm like, well, don't do that. <laughs> you know, like there are ways that you can actually like help yourself, you know? Um, and so I love that so much. Um, I want to ask y'all, because y'all go to um, The Belong, Belonging, right? Mm-hmm. Which yes. I love the belonging. I went to the belonging when I lived in Nashville and it was just awesome. I remember. Um, yes, I, remember I loved it. It was great. Oh, me and Lainey would dance into church. We just loved it. It was just such Cute. a great place. And we went on Tuesday nights. We were both on Winter Jam at the time. And when we started going to the belonging, so we thought it was so cool that they had church service on Tuesday. And I've personally learned so much from Alex and Henry. Um, Alex is the first um, female pastor I actually saw preach at 17 because I grew up in a traditional background. And when I saw her, I was like, I want to do that. Like, that was amazing. And I started like, (laughs) I literally looked her up on YouTube after that and started like watching her videos to like learn how she just pastored and how she did what she did. And so I ended up getting to, you know, go to the belonging and then told her several months after going to the belonging, she didn't know anything about that story. And it was just a really cool connection. But I want to ask you about church in general, because y'all are two people who scripture flows out of you. I mean, I ask you one question. It is truly a softball. You hit a home run. I mean, because it's so in you, you know, truth, you know, scripture, you know that. Um, How much of church has helped y'all with that? How much of your private relationship with God, your personal times? Because I think so many people desire to know the word, but they... They don't know, like, how do the people know all these things? So what what has church meant to y'all? What has private time meant to y'all and all those things? Y'all, we do so much online these days, whether it's ordering food or getting a ride or reading our Bible. I mean, whatever you want to do, you can pretty much find online to do. And so why not add education to the list? Liberty University is the perfect online education option. It's a Christian university whose mission is training champions for Christ. They also got some amazing opportunities with more than 600 online degrees to choose from. And most of their classes are 100% online and they're held in eight-week subterms with no set login times. They even have eight start dates every year, which means that whenever you're ready, Liberty University is ready for you. I love taking online classes for Liberty, and I know you will too. It was very doable because they don't have like very specific hard deadlines. It's a Monday to Monday thing, and you just get your work done in the meantime throughout the week as you please. And that was really doable for me with a crazy schedule. Um, And so I think it will be great for you too. I love it that Liberty University courses uh, teach not only the educational side and the school side, but also they teach a biblical perspective. And it is more affordable than two thirds of other online universities. All learning material for every class are provided digitally at no cost, which I know can be a big help to college students. And they also give credit for prior learning experience, training, and certifications. So if there's something that you've already been good at, you don't have to start from scratch. And Liberty isn't just for college either. My sister Bella actually went to Liberty University Online Academy, and that's um, accredited for K through 12th grade private Christian online academy with a biblical-based education that's accessible 24-7. So friends, this is homeschooling that you can trust. Their curriculum is taught by certified teachers and it's challenging, but also self-paced. Plus they offer all kinds of fun extracurricular activities like student clubs, field trips, so that you don't have to sacrifice being a part of a community for homeschooling. Liberty University Online Academy is an affordable homeschooling option too. And with rolling admissions, you can get started right away. Visit liberty.edu slash Sadie to learn more about these great online options today. And because you're a Well That's Good podcast listener, you'll get your application fee waived. So friends, don't wait. Go to liberty.edu slash Sadie now and get started on your future today. You want to go or you want me to go? Well, let me dip my little toe in because I wasn't, like I said, I was in church. So for me, church was vital because I couldn't understand some of the word because I'd never been exposed to some words. Like when Christians say Christianese, well, like you have to be aware that scripture words in scripture are are considered um, Christianese. So that's not something we should mock. Like the word grace, no idea what that meant um, prior to being saved. I, I, a lot of words that just that we use so easy that are so just easy. It's not words that you usually use in the world. So I had to learn a lot. Church for, for me was vital. 
But it did get to a point where, um, you know, you have to take the reins as a believer, you know, use what you learn in church, read the scriptures and make sure that everything is aligning and that you're growing spiritually beyond that. And then also as far as church, um, I, I realized too, in just watching everyone and then my own experience, like it comes to a point in church where it's like, you have to, I do think you need to sit and receive first, but I do think that you need to get involved as well as part of your growing. So it comes to a point in church where we almost have to stop, stop the phase of, or not stop, but not make it all about what am I getting from this? I, I hear a lot of people, good. you know, want to leave, change churches because they want more meat. And I'm like, you should be getting more meat in your word, in your own word. And yeah. if, if you get to that point, maybe that's the point where you need to start serving and giving it's to good. the new believer, helping with the new believers or helping others. I think, so church has been so instrumental for me, especially when I was around, when I was young, but I remember 12, 13 years old going to the Assemblies of God. And I remember when I was young, I was being attacked a lot in my mind, right? And so I would show up at church and the scripture verses, I would tell my, I wake my dad up in the middle of the night, like, dad, I don't want to think these thoughts. I have these intrusive thoughts. I didn't know they were intrusive. I just knew that these thoughts would float around in my brain and I hated them, but I would make me cry. It would make me lose sleep at night. I'm 12 years old. Um, and I remember my dad would give me scriptures, but when I went to church, my Royal Ranger commander was like a Christian boy scouts at Assemblies of God would give me the same scriptures my dad would give me. And all of a sudden chills would come down my body. Cause I was like, wait, Wow. These are the same scriptures. God is doing something. I just remember it was the first sign of like, wait, cool. the Lord is speaking to me. So the church has been instrumental. Love church. I love what my wife said, because I think there comes a point where it's church is not about what you get. You should be going to church to what you can give and That's support great. and be a part of. But I'll tell you this. Why is the word of God so important though? Because the, you know, faith is the only thing that pleases God. And so where the will of God is known, faith can rise up and the word of God is the will of God. And so I was reading this morning the scriptures, but we must rightly divide the word. There's many people, people are taking the word of God and they're taking out of context. Remember, if you take something out of context, you take the text out of it, it's a con and you'll be con. Hmm. You must always keep wow. the text in the context so you know what you're getting. It's good. But I remember thinking like, I remember thinking, a lot of people say, well, what would Jesus do? And we're hypothesizing and we're all trying to figure this out. Well, here's what we should do. Go look at the word. This is what Jesus did. Hmm. We don't have to ask questions anymore. There's a few things because there's a lot of theories about the word of God. But to make a very long story short, when you read the word of God, you know the will of God. And where hmm. you know the will of God, faith can rise up and you can act on that. And, and I'll tell you this, the enemy does not play fair. What do criminals do? Criminals disobey laws. Mm -hmm. And this is why the word of God is so, because people look at the word of God and say, well, it's not working. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you this, our, then, then our laws in our country aren't working because criminals are still actively, criminals don't obey laws. So we must police Scared. what the word of God says over our life. Now, many people can think what they want, but my conviction is that everywhere Jesus went, he healed every single person. So when I get sick in my body, now this can get, you might want to edit this out because this is going to be a, for, I'm going to make a statement here. I don't let sickness in my body. And, and, but will I get sick? Yes, I do. But I stick to the word it re, in spite of what I feel, hmm. you know, and I keep declaring the word. Now, I'd be forgetting sometimes. I, I get know. sick and I'm just like, <laughs> and, and you know what? And I tell her. He always tells me. Last night, like, she was, life. last night, believe it or not, my wife was, we got something going so around our house. Sick. She was throwing up last night and I walked in that room and I, well, you, I'm saying you pray for me. Let your faith I put heal. my hand away. And, and I know in that me. moment, I didn't see change. I didn't see he change. He never sees change. You always tell but me. But I'm still going to stick to the word of God. Jesus, you healed everyone. I love that. You never. And so I will, I will, will rebuke it. We demand it. But that's, that's it goes eventually. Fit. It goes. I okay. love that. Just but, not when he was. <laughs> hey, that I love that. I love how you're saying though that it's like the truth has to override your feelings, right? The truth has to override what yeah. you see in the moment. So it's like I might not see this right now. You might still be thrown up. You yep. might not feel this right now. But yep. I believe. In the name of Jesus, you That's are right. healed. We rebuke mm -hmm. this. So I love that because it's letting your faith rise above your circumstance, you know? And it's not being like yeah. naive or like like you said, it's not acting like right. it's not, she's not throwing up. It's just saying like, no, but we believe we have a God 
who brings hope. Which, by the way, you look beautiful today after a night of throwing up. So maybe the prayers <laughs> did did the truth <laughs> did set you well, free from that. Sh- what, what should we? Yeah, that's true. What should we believe though? Because some people will begin to relook at the scriptures and say, "Well, I prayed, but yet I was sick for seven days. So maybe I got the scriptures wrong." Mm-hmm. No. Maybe you just got to be, you got to stand firm in the faith, resisting the devil, mm-hmm. resisting the things. And, and because what does the scripture say? It says after a while, after you suffered, he was strengthened, settled, established. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't, good. I'll just tell you this, how we operate in the Goki family. And it's not easy is that we just, we, What's the word of easy? God, <laughs> just <laughs> the, when we're feeling sick, when we're going through I, my, my first wife passed away. But we were declaring healing. Hmm. But what's my confession? That wow. God is still a healer. I don't wow. have to sit there and, and water down my religion because God didn't answer. We don't see everything. We don't know hmm. all the details around that. But if God says, by your stripes, I'm healed, I'm just going to hang on to that. Wow. And I'm just grateful your prayers manifested. <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> That's awesome. Okay. That's awesome. <laughs> well, I think that that, like, I'm really glad that you said that, even that you shared that about your first wife, because I think that some people hear people like yourself who yeah. say things like, I don't believe, you know, I don't let sickness reign in our house or I don't, you know, um, I believe that Jesus heals everyone. And they say, well, you've never experienced, you know, then you yeah. couldn't have experienced what I've experienced, but you have. And so coming from yeah. um, a background, a story of a deep loss, like how did you come to the point where your faith got to this place of like, no, but I still believe yeah. God heals because that is a really hard thing to navigate. It is. And it's it's a great question because I really try to, and, and I need to say that because there's a lot of people who prayers they perceive haven't been answered. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I remember when Sophia passed away and we believed God. And here's the funny thing. We saw miracles when we prayed for other people. We saw people mm-hmm. being healed. Wow. But why didn't you heal her? And I had to let it go. There's just things that I don't know. So many people, because they haven't seen prayers answered, they've they've reconstructed their faith or reconstructed what the Bible says. Our experience should never shape the word of God, but the word of God should always shape our experience. That's great. Meaning, but I think people, when they think about healing, they think it has to happen right now, this moment. Mm. You or know how what? I think it or how I think it should happen. There's always two ways to look at it. If God doesn't heal me here, he's going to heal me in heaven. Yeah. And and so that's why I stick to it because this is an eternal principle of healing. Mm-hmm. And and if I if I'm suffering, like I have a song called Stay Strong that says if I never see the promise on this side of the grave, mm. my hope might be shaken, but my uh, but my faith will never break. And, and I remember cuz my hope was shaken so much when Sophia passed away cuz God, we prayed and we had faith. But you know what? I I I don't I remember after she passed away, a healing movement broke out at my church. People mm-hmm. were being because so many prayers were put into the ground and, wow. and, and th- that people were being healed of heart conditions and people were being healed of cancer. And I'm thinking in my head, why are these people being healed? And I'm and, and, and I lost my wife. I don't have to answer that. I just know this. My experience mm-hmm. will keep shifting if I just keep believing what the word of God says. And this is a it's lifelong good. process. It's good. A lifelong process. But this is how we become steady in our faith. It's so great. when sickness comes, we're not pointing a finger at God. If cancer comes, we're not, we're just saying, no, we're yep. just saying, God, I know you can use this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to worship you in the midst of this. Like, look at Paul. Apparently, Paul's faith wasn't very strong, but what did his faith do? It made him praise during shipwreck. It made him wow. praise in the prison. It made him praise while he's getting bitten by snakes. Yeah. He's getting what faith did, it manifested in a greater work happening inside of him than what the enemy was doing to him. Wow. And so I think for me, that's where I want to be. If cancer comes, let praise always be on my mouth because God yeah. is a healer, even if it's. Does that make sense? That makes so much sense. That's so good. It makes me think about Hebrews 11 where it's talking about all these heroes of faith. And then it says that yeah. and all these people went on um, to, you know, pass before they got all that God had promised. But it says, Amen. but God was not ashamed to be their God for he had something better in mind. Wow. And I love that verse because I think some people think like, 
oh, like that, like what does that say now about your faith? Like what does that say now about your God if this happened? And it's like he's not ashamed to be your God because there is an eternal hope. And we're looking at it from an eternity's perspective, not just this circumstantial moment. And so I, I love that, man. It's so, everything you're saying is so rich and so good. It helps so many people. And I think in the same way, oppositely, sometimes God does answer our prayers and then we don't give God the credit for it. I mean, I was thinking about a situation recently where, you know, we had this day and we had like level three tornado threat or something. And, you know, everybody was nervous and of course, I hate storms too. I was so nervous. And I'm praying and I'm just like, Lord, we just, you're the God that calms the, you know, sea and you stop the wind and the way, all the things. I'm just praying and I'm praying. My husband's in the car and I'm just asking that the Lord would just let the storm pass, that it just wouldn't come and all these things. Well, that day, the storm actually did not come. Like we did not have a storm at all. We were supposed to have like this big storm. And later, like my husband made this like passing comment to somebody like, oh, our weathermen are terrible. And I was like, what? I was like, we prayed for this. Like that wasn't like our weathermen messing it up. Like I believe that God actually did like calm the storm. Like I believe that God actually did. And so I think sometimes like we also downplay the power of God actually answering our prayers because we're like, oh, well, the weatherman missed it. It's like, yeah, but you also just prayed. Oh, I just stopped throwing up. It's like, oh, but we actually did pray. And so acknowledging God does do those things too. He does heal. He does still calm the storm. And sometimes he doesn't, you know, and that's where it comes to that. Well, there have been three massive tornadoes the past few weekends in the South that have been devastating. So then what do you say to that? Well, again, you know, um, we don't know the answer to all the things, but we do know that we have an eternal hope. And so I think that you brought that down really, really well. Um, Y'all, this has been awesome. I got to ask y'all before we go out, because I just want to shout out, y'all have y'all's own podcast, which is so great. Uh, One of my team members, was listening to your podcast and she said, man, listening to their podcast makes you want to be a Goki for a day. So um, just <laughs> wanted to compliment y'all on that and give y'all a minute to talk about a little bit about what y'all's podcast is, why y'all started it and uh, send the people over to Living La Vida Goki. Yeah. So Living La Vida Goki was birthed from just wanting to, first of all, let people in to the window of the Gokis because there's a lot of comedy, but also there's a depth there. And we feel called not just to make people laugh, but we feel called to lead people and to point them towards Jesus. And so, you know, we started this podcast in 2021. We got a few more episodes actually coming out. We've been really in the process of brainstorming um, in this podcast. How do we, how do we serve more people and how do we reach more people with what they need? Cause you know, in the podcast, as you know, you serve people. That's why so many people listen to your podcast. And so we've been really brainstorming. We got a couple new episodes. We have some guests, some fun guests coming out. Uh, We've got some friends. So that's kind of cool that you can interview friends that, you know, you know, in depth, Yeah, you know, people get to know and things that you've learned from them, you can, you know, share it with others. So that's been fun. We ask hard questions. We go for it. We it. Um, ask real questions. Yeah, because the to- culture right now is, is right now, there's a lot of confusion in the culture. And yeah. so we've been trying to address that with love, it's good. you know, and so it's a very eclectic podcast. I think we're still trying to figure it out because we just, we have so much inside of us that we want to get out. And yeah, so I encourage fun. people to start at yeah. season one because you'll really get to know us <laughs> in an season interesting way. way. You know us. That's yeah. interesting way. Let me tell you that. <laughs> what are we on? We're just on season two right now, yeah. right? We're only on season two, so. I love it. Yeah. So okay. you're not, you haven't missed much. Well, that's the fun <laughs> thing about podcasting, though, is like you have all these things in your heart and it does grow and it does change. I mean, I've been doing mine for almost five years now. Um, and wow. it, you know, from start to now, the heartbeat of it has stayed the same. I still start with the same question. I still interview people, still do the same, but it started only being like 20 minutes long. Now it's like hour long episodes. It started with us doing this segment at the end. It was like, well, that's good. Well, that's bad advice. And we call my mom and we don't do that as much anymore. And so uh, we don't do that all anymore. My mom comes on and answers hard questions now. So it's changed a little bit and we really found our groove and what people respond to. And that's the fun thing about podcasting is it's your space to grow. Like that's one of my favorite things about it is, you know, coming from reality TV myself, you know, it's kind of hard whenever it's like, you're always told what it has to be. And you're like, but yeah. this is also me. So I want it to feel like me, but podcasting is like, no, this actually really is me. And so I love that y'all are just sharing who y'all are with people. And y'all are such great people to learn from because you do have such a depth, but you also make it fun. And like you said at the beginning, like 
you gotta just laugh at life sometimes. I mean, it's so serious and it's hard and there is truly hard stuff and serious stuff that we're all walking through. But giving the gift of laughter is such a, such a treasure. And so you guys are awesome. Thank y'all for taking the time to be on the Will It's Good podcast. I can't wait for people to listen and I just appreciate all that y'all put out. Thank you, Sadie. It was a pleasure to be with you. Sadie, we love you.